Hi everybody, this video is on the new moon which happens on the 25th of May. It's a new moon in Gemini and it happens at 44 minutes past 8 in the evening and that's based on London time. So a new moon as always happens every month. The moon is totally black, we can't see it. It's when the sun and the moon, they sit on top of each other and the moon pulls in energy so that it can get ready for its next monthly cycle. So this new moon is pulling in Gemini energy. And Gemini is a really positive sign of the zodiac. First of all, it's an air sign. So it's about ideas, it's about communication and it's about the exchange of ideas. If you look at the glyph of Gemini, it's a Roman numeral two and it looks like a doorway. So Geminis are curious. They want to go through every doorway to try and discover what is behind each door. And they just have a kind of enthusiasm for life and an enthusiasm for knowledge and expressing ideas and sharing information. And it's fun and it's optimistic. So that's the energy that's being pulled in. It's at four degrees. Four is stability and structure and foundation. Okay, think of four as the emperor in the tarot. It just sits there. Okay, so a lot of information that is being pulled in is going to feel very certain and is going to make you feel somewhat like an authority figure in your own life. And it's going to make you feel like you know what's best for you. I don't doubt that. I really think that your guidance speaks to you very loudly and clearly at the moment and um, that the messages that come through that you feel very certain about, you can listen to those and you can heed those messages and refuse things that don't work for you because you are getting the information in and it's your higher self speaking to you. So that new moon sitting there bring, pulls in a lot of communicative energy. So the pace socially is going to pick up. You'll notice that people are out and about doing things more. They're, they're more willing to stop and have a chat. It's more likely that people smile at you. And it's not just because it's summer now in the Northern Hemisphere and the sun's coming out and it's getting warmer. This applies in the Southern Hemisphere as well, where you're just heading into winter. It's a really positive time of people wanting to connect and sharing ideas and to communicate. Okay. So this new moon then, form some relationships with other parts of the chart which color it and influence a little bit more. So first of all, it forms a semi-square with Venus in Aries. Venus is the planet of love and beauty. In Aries, she is far more aggressive and powerful and independent and pioneering than she usually would be. It's Venus kind of um, the goddess of love as a bodybuilder. I want what I want when I want it. Okay, so it's very focused on the self. Th there's some friction between um, the new moon in Gemini here and this Venus in Aries because when you find out information, there's going to be a tendency with this Venus to immediately want to take action on it. So you find out the information about a great um, apartment that's being auctioned off you think it's a real bargain, you immediately, you don't even think about it, you don't talk to your partner about it, you head down to the auction and you buy the house with a view to renovate it and to do it up and then to flip it. But what's the partner going to say when you've, when you've just used your life savings and you've just impulsively bought something like this, okay? So information is good, curiosity is good, reckless, compulsive, <laughs> Action isn't so good because it'll take you a lot longer to unravel all of that mess if you just jump into things. Okay, sitting on top of that Venus is Uranus. It's seven degrees apart, so it blends its energy with Venus. Uranus is the planet of rebellion and eccentricity and doing things by yourself. Also in Aries, it's about I'm doing things by myself. I don't need anyone's permission. It's me. A rebel in that position with Venus on top of it, there's going to be a really strong desire to just make it happen. I feel like doing something. I want to do something to just make myself feel better. It can be as simple as that. I'm learning. I'm getting information. I'm interested in that. Why not just sign up for that? I think it'll be fun. That's the kind of thing here that is in the atmosphere today. So make sure that you don't sign your life away, that you don't sign up for a five-year commitment, that you don't, you know, um, 
do something really reckless and long term just because it, you feel like it on this day, the 25th of May, which, you know, in two years you'll have forgotten about, but the direct debits that are still coming out every month, which you signed up for, will still be in place. Okay, so just be very careful about that. The next relationship it forms is a sesky square with Pluto, and that's in Capricorn. Pluto is the planet of transformation and change. In Capricorn, it's about changing earthy, practical things, especially work, um, how you make money, the content of your work, how you work, where you work, what it is you do for work, anything to do with work, and what the ultimate goal is. Okay. So again, remember, information is being pulled in. You are like a, you're like a, you're like a spider with 32 eyes. Okay, and you're watching every aspect of your life. And you're very interested in everything. One of those aspects that you're now interested in via this uh, sesky square is your work, how you make money, and what could change in that area. How could you work smarter? How can you work more effectively? How can you work less hard and make more money? That's a genuine question. And that's a genuine question you're going to be asking yourself because as you're going through life, you're looking for an advantage. You're looking to have a good life, but to also have some leisure time and to have free time and you're trying to make things better. And you're really very astute here today and very teachable and you're really able to spot opportunities which you can then implement and solidify in your life to give you a consistent sense of ease and comfort and to make things consistently more comfortable. So Pluto will be kind of, the wheels of Pluto will be churning alongside this new moon, getting you to think about how can I make my life more abundant and prosperous and how can I transform it to be that way and to remain that way. The next relationship the new moon forms is an opposition with Black Moon Lilith in Sagittarius in your first house. Black Moon Lilith is the part of the self that's repressed and in Sagittarius it will say, oh, don't reach too far, don't overextend yourself, don't take a risk, don't go on these adventures, you might fall on your face, you might bail. Now that's no great insight because whenever we do anything in life we might fail. Okay, we only know that we failed and we only know that it wasn't a good course of action uh, with the benefit of hindsight when we can look at that thing and say, right, that failed. And then we could say, oh, it failed. But this is the ego sabotaging you here on this day, okay? The Black Moon Lilith is saying, okay, you're getting all of this idea in and it's helping you in a, a certain way as well. So it's a double-edged sword. So it's sabotaging you in a way because it's helping you get all of this um, information in. With Pluto, you will then want to think about how you can implement things to make things better. But remember, Venus and Uranus are super reckless down there, um, urging you to just rush into things. And Black Moon Lilith and Sagittarius makes it difficult to discern the right path forward. So this is a new moon, which is about thinking about the things that you're going to implement in future. But it's not a new moon that is about taking action on the day itself. It's a day of research and thinking. It's not a day of signing and, con and, and um, committing to the contract and um, you know, proposing. It's not the actual doing that this new moon is about. It's the actual research that will lead to the doing. So don't let yourself be rushed into anything. That Black Moon Lilith in Sagittarius will say, okay, I have four paths ahead of me. Which one am I going to take? They look exactly the same. They're exactly identical. There's no way you can make the right decision because Black Moon Lilith will make the path forward fuzzier. And you'll there's no way of making the right decision. So steer clear of that. The new moon also opposes Sagittarius and um, it's the Sagittarius rising. So the rising sign is always your default setting. And on this day, despite Black Moon Lilith trying to kind of repress it and put a lid on it, you feel upbeat, you feel uh, communicative, you feel adventurous, you feel like you can find out new things and walk through different doorways and learn and 
teach and discover. So we've got two things going on here on this day, okay? On the one hand, we have you very curious and optimistic, enthusiastic, teachable and interested in everything. On the other hand, we've got um, recklessness and we've got Black Moon Lilith saying, I don't know what I should be reading, which door I should go in first. And also, I don't know which one's right. So we've got the desire to do, but then we've also got characteristics which really just complicate things and make it a little bit pointless. Because what's the point of me going to the library and taking out 10 random books and reading all of those 10 random books if I didn't have a goal in mind, then I've just read 10 books. But I haven't. But if my goal was to uh, learn how to garden, and I've just read 10 fantasy novels, then I'm no better off and I've wasted my time. So this is a day of research and asking yourself, what is my goal? What is the thing I want to be working on in future? And getting that down and making that clear and planning it so that in future you can then act on it. Sagittarius is adventurous. It does want to have a new beginning. It does want to have a fresh start. It echoes Venus and Uranus. So you're going to have to fight this urge to commit and to take action and to really just go for it. There's a lot of action um, energy in this chart and I'm telling you to hold back and to walk through a couple of doors before you make the right decision. You know, when I rented this place where I live now, I looked at eight apartments in the area before I chose this one. This was the last out of the eight that I looked at and thank goodness I looked at eight because this was the best out of all of the eight and this is the one I chose. So I had a focus in mind, I looked around, I did the research, I walked through every door until I found what I was looking for. And that's here, it's about walking through the doorways, it's not just picking the first one and rushing into to it. Do you see the difference of what I mean here? There is a big difference between that. It's, it's, it's making a decision to act rather than acting. The final relationship this new moon forms is it forms a trine with the midheaven in Virgo. The midheaven is the chart's indicator of vocational aptitude. Virgo is um, practical. It's about making decisions. Again, it's ruled by Mercury, the communication planet, and this new moon is in Gemini, also ruled by the communication planet. Gemini is about expressing information. Virgo is about taking information in and making sense of it. So this new moon is all about information inwards and outwards. You've got, you've got both channels open. You're receiving and you're putting stuff out there. And the Virgo energy with this midheaven means that you, are, you have a really clear eye, you have a good concise vision of what you're trying to achieve. You'll be able to look at your ideas and say, even with this recklessness of Venus, Uranus and the rising sign in Sagittarius, even with that recklessness, this midheaven in Virgo is beautiful because it will say, uh, that's not such a good idea, that is a good idea. So even if you are a little bit reckless, Virgo saves you because it prevents you from galloping off into the completely wrong direction because Virgo makes good decisions and it's at 11 degrees here as your midheaven. 29 in itself is very strong whenever, because each house of the chart is 30 degrees. 0, 1 and 29 are the strongest parts of that um, energy. And Virgo is at 29 here, so Virgo is strong. Also, looking at it from the numerology perspective, 2 and 9 is 11. 11 is the master number of service. Okay, So the decisions and the doorways that you walk through today and the things that you discover and then act upon in future will be of service and will help other people because you've made the right decision. But again, I'm telling you today to research and to think about things and not to act and not to rush. It's to weigh up your options and to determine and to discover and to learn and to get as much information in as possible. It will really serve you and it will really help you to build something solid in future. So there you go. That's what I get for you uh, during this new moon in Gemini on the 25th of May. If you would like a private reading with me, 
What I can do is I can draw up your birth chart by looking at your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. We can then analyze the chart to see what your vocational aptitudes are or what your life purpose is. But what I can also do is put these transits, like I've just looked at, I can put that around your birth chart and we can have a look at what's coming up for you in future, especially in what area of your life this new moon falls and where this energy is being pulled into. Is it being pulled into your second house of money or your seventh house of relationships? How is this influencing you particularly? And we can also have a look at uh, what's coming up for you in general in love and career and uh, finance and friendships and family. So the website is gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab to order your reading. Please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll speak to you next week.